guys. Uh, my name's Amanda. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my first ever official video. Um, I have to leave for work soon, so I'm going to try to knock out this video. Um, I just, I need to get it done because I feel like if I don't get it done now or sometime in the next few days, I'm never going to do it. And, and right now is the time. Like, I need to just put it myself out there. I want to share my story. I... I'm 27 years old, I have a two and a half year old son, and I am married for about three years now. And in winter of 2018, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called mixed connective tissue disease. So let me begin with my story now, just get right into it. My baby was about, I want to say like seven months old, and the job I was working at, my, my schedule didn't fit for them, so I went around looking for another job. I eventually, excuse me, got another job. So the last job I was working at, it was not like an office job or anything. It was just like, I was standing and walking a lot. Like it was like a, I wasn't in an office. Um, this new job, I was working in an office a lot. It was probably like a month and a half or two months in that I started noticing some symptoms. Um, like my first thing that I, I noticed was um, my wrist started hurting. And I thought it was because I was at a desk all day and I was typing and using the phone and, you know, using my hands a lot. I thought that it was that. That it was like carpal tunnel. I went to urgent care and, and I was like, yeah, let's get this checked out. So we got it checked out. The doctor gave me a brace for my wrist and uh, for both wrists. And then she gave me like some anti-inflammatory, whatever, like some medication for pain. And she sent me for a blood test, which I thought was kind of weird because I was like, it's just pain in my wrist, you know, like, what, why, why are you sending me for a blood test? She must have thought something was going on. Like, a few days later, I went for a blood test, whatever. Um, at this job, uh, there was a, a, an opportunity for me to apply for a promotion. So, I applied for the promotion, um, and I was actually in the middle, in the process of interviewing for it, and, um, eventually I got it, and during the time that I was, like, interviewing and everything, and, like, in the process of the promotion... I was still, in that time, I was in the process of going, like, waiting for the blood test results and doing all this shit, right? So finally, that doctor calls me, and she's like, hey, I got your blood test results back, um, and I think you have something called lupus, and I feel like she didn't make it sound as serious as it is, or, like, maybe I just didn't understand it, that it was so serious at that time, um, but she was like, hey, can you, uh, come by the office? I think you have lupus, um, we can talk more about it here. I went back to the office and, and she, basically she explained that to me and um, she said like I can't diagnose you because I'm not like that doctor. Like I'm a doctor but I'm not a specialist in that and this is just based on like one blood test. Um, so I'm going to refer you to a specialist, a rheumatologist. Um, I couldn't get an appointment until a couple months later and a couple months later ended up being like I'm going to say November because this is when I heard the term mixed connective tissue disease. Like that's that's what the doctor told me. So, um, so I waited a few months, and in that, those few months, that's when I got my promotion, that's when I, I started my new role, like, I knew my job was going to be really stressful, because I was, um, I was a department manager, like, I, I knew it was, like, a lot, like, before I was going through all of this, I was, like, in that field doing what I do for like four years before so I was like I can totally do this like I was ready for that promotion like I need to learn something new I, I need to step it up like let's do this like I'm gonna take this head on right but then it sucked because I was promoted and I, w I was feeling like shit I started feeling more symptoms we were outside I was outside with my boss at that time and uh this is the first time I ever knew about Raynaud's, like, this is when I started learning about it. It was cold, we were walking outside, and, and I, my feet, like, I noticed my feet, I couldn't feel my feet, and I was like, what the hell? And, um, and then my hands, like, I looked at my hands, and they were, they were numb, and my fingers were white, and then, like, the tips, like, they were all white, like, all here, and then the tips started turning purple, and I was like, what the hell? Like, I don't know what this is, like, what's going on with my hands? And I showed my boss, and he was like, oh, um... Like, your your circulation is, is being cut off. And I was like, that's weird. And that's, that's when I started noticing, like, the, the Raynaud's, the cold sensitivity. I noticed, like, during that time that I just felt like crap. I had no energy. And it wasn't, like, normal no energy. Like, I know, like, years ago, like, I 
I know what it feels like to not have energy, like just like a normal person who's healthy and whatever, like you're tired, like you've done too much the past few days, um, you haven't had your coffee, but this was different. This was completely different. Um, I was having trouble getting out of bed and it wasn't, it wasn't my mind, it was my body. It, it wasn't, I was too tired, it was, um, <clears throat> my body was too stiff and in too much pain for me to even like get up and out of bed. I was having trouble walking, I was having trouble, um, taking a shower, uh, lifting my hands above my, like, above my head was really hard. Washing my hair was exhausting to me, like, in the shower, like, I was like, like, I invested in dry shampoo eventually, because I was like, I'm not going to wash my hair. So I started experiencing, like, a lot more symptoms, like, they were coming, like, faster and faster. So I finally got in to see the doctor, the rheumatologist, and this was in September, October, we'll say October. October-ish, November-ish, I don't remember, I think maybe the beginning of November, and um, uh, he evaluated me, whatever, and he's like, you know what, maybe it's just like stress from your new job, you're, you're a new mom, like, you know, like, maybe it's just stress, you're, you're putting your body through a lot right now, um, so we're gonna like give you some testing, whatever, and, and hopefully that's what it is, right? So, um, he sent me for blood tests, and so at the end of November, we got the results back, and he was like, yeah, there's definitely something weird going on with your body, like, your blood tests are, like, cray-cray, like, I don't know medical terms, but he was just like, your white blood cells are, like, you have, a, like, a high white blood cell count or something, which means, like, your body is fighting an infection, and then, like, I had really bad anemia. The doctor's like, your blood test is, like, crazy, like, your results are all over the place, like, I can't really give you a specific answer right now but I think you have mixed connective tissue disease and he just explained that it was like an autoimmune disease and like that was it basically like and he used medical terms and and I didn't understand any of like what the hell that meant I I didn't take it that serious so I was like I don't know coming out of there I didn't know exactly what was going on with my body and then I was like I didn't like him and he didn't bother to explain anything to me like in detail like he just used medical terms like he didn't talk to me like I was a person so I was like I'm gonna look for another doctor so I looked for another doctor and then uh, again like a month later I I finally was like I got to see him this was like in December I got to see him and I was like uh, same thing like so that other doctor the last doctor I saw transferred everything over to him like he gave him all the information so I didn't have to go for more testing at that time. Just from those uh, test results, he was like, yeah, I agree with him. I think you have mixed connective tissue disease. I was so glad my husband went with me to this doctor appointment. Uh, this doctor, at least, he gave us more, more information on it. My husband, fortunately, was there and he... Because when you, when you hear that you're being diagnosed with something, it's like something turns off in your head. Like, that's all you hear. You hear that you have like a sickness and, and, and it's like everything just stops and you, you like tune out like you're not paying attention anymore mm. so I was really lucky that uh, my husband was there to like speak for me and ask questions so he was the one asking the, the doctor the questions like, is this like a real disease? Like, is there a cure? Um, it's my alarm for my medication. Um, so he was asking him like, what do, you, what do we do? Like, is there a cure? And the doctor was like, no, it's just manageable. Like you take medication um, and then we're gonna be like doing routine testing all the time to just like monitor your body and make sure that everything's okay. And, um, so that's officially, like, when I was diagnosed was, like, in December of 2018. Um, and then the doctor is like, well, we, we can't start you on medication until we get, uh, we have to check your whole body first. Like, we have to run some testing to make sure your body is ready to take on the medication to, to take it. Make sure you're not pregnant, um, you gotta check your lungs, check your breathing, um, make sure there's like nothing going on with your heart. So I had to go through a whole bunch of testing. So after that doctor appointment, he just gave me like a bunch of paperwork. Like I, I needed to go get all this stuff done. I am still feeling like shit. 
every morning I felt like I got hit by a bus. Like, this was like my legs, my ankles, my knees, my arms, my shoulders, my back. Like, it was, everything was hurting. And, um, it, it just felt like, it's like a feeling like of soreness. Like, if you've ever been in a car accident, like, the feeling after, like if it feels like a really hard impact, the feeling after a car accident that you have in your body from the impact, it's like a huge, really bad soreness. That's what my whole body felt like. And this was every day and it was all day. And, and like I said, at work, I took on a, a big job. Like this was a, a, a really good opportunity for me. So, and I was like, I still want to do it. Like I was still like fighting and trying to do it. And it was just hard. Like it was hard for me physically and it was hard for me mentally and emotionally. Like I was going through so much with like my health and then like it was really affecting my family, obviously. Like, um, I, I ended up talking to my boss at that time and I was like, hey, you know, I have this stuff going on and like, I don't know if I can do this, this job. Like, it's too much for me. Like, I have that going on. I have, you know, like, it's just hard. It was a lot. And, um, so I told him, like, I don't know if I can do it. He told me, you know what? Like, I know it's hard. I know, I know that you're going through a lot right now, but let's just try. Like, you're doing a really good job and you're you're pushing through it and let's just just try so i was like okay like i'm gonna try and my husband too he was like don't let this get in the way of what you want like just try i gave myself like a month and i was like i can't like i can't do this like i was i hadn't been on medication yet like i i still didn't know what was going on with everything so i was like i need to I need to step down from that position. I need to go, like, either find another job or, like, do something. I don't know. So, um, I ended up staying at the same company, but I transferred to another department. So, this was, like, in February, uh, in 2019, February. Like, I finally transferred over. I think that's when I, like, was just starting my medication because my body was flaring up so bad. Like, I, my symptoms were just, oh, terrible. Like, so the cold sensitivity was really bad at that time like i mean well no it still is not at that time it still is really bad um i i haven't learned to control it or anything i don't think there's anything i can do to control it except now i just make sure that i bundle up i keep gloves i wear socks whatever but back then i didn't know how to control anything like i it was all new to me still like <laughs> you know there was eventually like a time where i i really couldn't walk like so the way I think is I'm not going to call out of work unless I'm, like, dying. Like, I, I work hard, you know? And and I, I was like, I'm going to make this work, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Like, I asked my dad, can I can I use some crutches? So we got some crutches, and, and I went to work with crutches. I didn't, I didn't think about it at all. Like, no one knew why... I had just started in that job, the last one that I was in, in, in the other department, and and I was promoted, and I, I just kind of, like, left. Like, it felt to me at that time, um, I know now it was the best thing that I, I mean, like, it was a good choice for me at that time, like, in that moment. Um, but I remember back then, like, I, I felt like a failure, like... I had had for a long time like it was my goal to to do that like I didn't work at that company for a long time but in other uh, other places that I had worked at it was always towards that like that job was my goal and I finally got it and um, it was like I couldn't do it and I felt like a freaking failure and it sucked so I, I that that hit me hard too like having a sickness and then not being able to do the job that I, I had wanted to do for a long time like it sucked so I never thought about like like eventually when I was like going to work with crutches like people were asking me like what happened and so nobody knew like physically there was nothing wrong with me like you look at me I wasn't wearing a cast I wasn't wearing a brace like um I was just with crutches and and um 
<clears throat> I still look normal. Like, I look like a healthy young woman, right? So it was weird. I made jokes when people would ask me, like, um, like what happened to me. Like, I would just, like, I don't know, say, like, I got in a fight or something. I don't know. I, I told someone I slipped on a banana peel. Like, so um, during that time when I was, like, using crutches and people were asking me, like, what happened, I was like, you know what? I have to tell people. Like, I can't, I can't hide this anymore. I can't. Like, it's not, obviously, like, it's not doing anything good for me because when I was, like, it's not that I was hiding it, but I was keeping it to myself, and I was in so much pain all the time that, um, like, I would cry going to work. Like, on my way, my drive to work, I would cry because I was so, like, upset and sad and, like, in pain, but I was, like, more frustrated at the fact that I am young and, and I could physically, like, I'm young, like, I have so much energy, like, I know I can do so much, but I was so mad that because when I was trying to drive, and when I was trying to put my kid in the car seat, and I was trying to buckle him, it hurt so bad, like, I couldn't do it, and, and it was just frustrating, it's like, it's just frustrating, like, you know you can do it, but you physically can't, I don't know if that makes sense, but, like, it's, it's frustrating. Like, you're trying to do it because you know you can do it and you've done it, like, for so long. And then when it's just, like, it's taken away from you. Your ability to do things. Like, it's just, it's taken from you. And it just sucks. And, and I was always, like, so frustrated. And, like, whoo. It's just, it was frustrating. Anyway, after, like, a week or so, like, of, of um, going to work with crutches, I was like, uh, I'm not gonna hide it anymore. I'm, I, like, uh, I just, like, felt so alone, and, like, I didn't know what to do, and I know, like, I had, I had friends and I have family, like, that are, are all there, and they're here to support me and everything, but it's just, like, I shut everybody out, and I, I was like, nobody gets me, like, no one understands, like, um, so I, I took to social media, and I was like, I'm gonna find some people that, understand what I'm going through, I'm going to find people that have, like, lupus and, and whatever else, like, I'm going to connect with them, and, and I need to know that I, there's people out there that are going through the same thing that I, I am, like, it just, whew, it was hard, so, um, I finally went on social media, I, I found lupus chick, lupus chick, um, I connected with her, and she was like, you know what, don't feel alone, like, there are so many other people out there that are, you know, going through the same thing you're going through or something similar or feeling the same way you feel. Um, and, and she, honestly, she told me, like, if you want to share your story, don't be scared to do it. So, um, I ended up posting, um, a picture on my Instagram and I was like, to anybody wondering, like, um, the reason why I'm using crutches is because I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, like, and posting that picture with ex my explanation of, of, of what is going on was like a huge weight lifted off of my shoulders. Like, oh, it felt just so good to just like let everybody know like, hey, um, I, I have this, like I have a, a freaking disease that's attacking my body and it's making it physically hard for me to do anything. Like. I know I look like a healthy girl. I know all of this and, and it just, I don't know, it felt good to tell people and, and it helped me a lot, honestly. And um, we're a year later, uh, a year and a half later, and um, things are different for me now, a lot different than they were when I was first diagnosed. Um, I experience a lot less flares than I used to. I used to, like, I, I, like I said, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do a lot, um, and I don't experience that anymore. Like, there is days that if I, if I do too much, like if I work out too much, or if I do too much at work, or whatever, I feel really, really drained and really exhausted, and my body does start to hurt, and there are days where I s skip my medication or whatever, um, not days, but I'll skip, like, the morning medication, and, and then so, like, my immune system like will kick back on I think I don't know exactly how it works but I could feel the pain like fast if I skip my medication um but yeah like here we are you know like a year and a half later and I feel so much better and um I I'm feeling good I have 
my energy back, I have my confidence back, and I, I want to share my story, and I, I want everybody out there to know that you're not alone, like, whether it's an autoimmune disease, whether it's, like, any type of anything, like, it doesn't have to be autoimmune, or it doesn't even have to be a disease, like, if you feel alone, like, I'm here to tell you you're not, and there, there's so many people out there that, that feel the same way you do, you just need to, you need to help yourself, and you need to, to, you don't have to put yourself out there, but go seek help, like, there are people out there you can talk to, and um, social media, I think, is a good way to connect with people, and, and I'm hoping you, you guys in the comments can connect with people here. Like, put your Instagram on there, like, like talk to each other, and it, it's just so much easier to connect with people on social media versus, like, in person, like, it stopped recording, it cut me off, I was talking too much. Okay, if you like this video, please, please, please like it with a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Um, and give me feedback, comments, anything you want to hear, um, let me know. Thanks, guys. Bye!